I'm Shelby Marie Daigle and I'm the Ottawa Regional Coordinator of the Multimedia Multiculturalism Project of the United Nations Association in Canada. And uh, we've just finished up a great event um, at Club Saw here in Ottawa um, that basically was called Represent and it was exploring um, issues around how um, diverse ethnocultural communities are represented in um, mainstream media and community media here in Ottawa. So uh, what were some highlights of the event? Um, I think... Um, Actually, sorry, what, what was the purpose of the event? The purpose of the event was really sort of to kick off um, the project here in Ottawa. So the project has been going on nationally um, in several other cities um, across Canada, but it hadn't really um, gotten started with a big event in Ottawa. We have Ottawa interns who are interning um, in uh, two media organizations here in Ottawa, but we haven't really had a big event to introduce the project to the Ottawa community. So that was really the purpose of this event. And, um, you know, I really wanted to um, choose a venue that um, I knew was, you know, really important in, here in Ottawa for um, grassroots, grassroots multimedia um, producers, which is uh, Saw Video and Saw Gallery. So Club Saw is really a space where you can have concerts, you can have um, plays shown, you can have documentaries shown, um, and they also do a lot of um, education um, for, you know, average folks who just want to... Um, learn about how to make their own, own forms of media, whether it be um, mostly in terms of video media. Um, so I thought it was a great space to choose. And, um, and it's also really interesting because I knew that many people who were coming um, to it would not be familiar with the space. And that was actually my point. I wanted to get people in who have never been here before. So they, because um, one of the, the challenges I think, one of the barriers facing many ethnocultural communities is just learning about the media culture and the arts culture, you know, um, here in, in Canada. So um, for many people, this is their first time being here. Um, and um, another aspect was, it, was I wanted to highlight um, Ottawa's spoken word scene. Um, Ottawa has won the national championships for, for spoken word twice in a row. And this, the Ottawa spoken word scene is really driven by ethnocultural youth. Um, so one of our panelists actually is Ian Ketiku, who um, is actually not only uh, been a nat you know, in the Nationals, he also is a, a global champion. He, he won the World Spoken Word Championship in 2010. Um, and for many people here, they came up to me afterwards and they're like, this is my first time hearing spoken word. So that I think definitely was, was a highlight for me. It's, um, I've introduced people to a new space. Um, a, a new way of, of being exposed to media, realizing that the media in some ways, like in terms of producing your own media, is really accessible. There's training you can get here. And also to a whole new form of uh, expression, which is spoken word, which is really, it's a really cheap form of expression. And, and, and I would say that's why so many ethnocultural youth um, embrace it and get involved with it. So I think that the, really the, the, the biggest achievement of tonight was um, bringing together many different worlds and exposing people um, to to new forms of creativity and, and new ideas. Yeah, and, and bring, you're talking about bringing together different worlds. Um, of the four panelists, there is really a diversity of experiences and backgrounds of where they're coming from. Yes, and um, I deliberately um, set it up that way. Um, you know, we had um, Manjeet Bassi, who um, really is a, a social justice activist and an entrepreneur. Um, and uh, but now um, recently uh, has gotten involved um, with Rogers Community Television as a host for Trailblazers, which is a, cr uh, a show she created. She had the idea for it because she really wanted to sort of highlight a lot of the unsung heroes of of, of Ottawa, really, uh, you know, doing amazing things, uh, particularly related to social justice. Um, but um, and I think that's definitely why I chose her because she's the kind of person that's um, like me. I really love this city. I love Ottawa. Um, I find it's a city that a lot of people who live here are like, I don't want to be here. You know, they're, they're here for a job or they work for the government or something. But I love this city. I, I'm born and raised here and I don't want to leave. And Manjeet's somebody else like that too. She just loves the city and she knows that it's full of so many undiscovered treasures. And that's really one of the, one of the themes of her show is just showing people all these different um, these different community members we have, and I knew she'd be able to bring a very interesting insight. She also is um, Indo-Canadian, and I, I really wanted the panel to, to sort of um, be as ethnoculturally diverse as possible because I also knew that there's different, even when we talk about issues of representation, different communities are represented differently in the media. Um, so definitely, um, and she was able to talk about how, you know, there are many Indo-Canadian faces in media, 
So in some ways, um, that experience might be different than, say, the Aboriginal community, the black community. Um, so she was able to give that, that perspective as well, which is great. Um, another um, very interesting panelist was Dr. Alia Dakruri, who is a professor. Um, she's a professor in the Department of Communications at the University of Ottawa. Um, and uh, you know, she's, she's a Muslim woman, Arab woman. Um, she wears hijab. Um, and a lot of what she's written about um, has been about the representation of Muslims in media. And so I knew that she, um, she would be able to bring an interesting background because of her academic study. Also, she educates a lot of aspiring journalists. Um, she actually was a professor of one of our interns. Um, so she also would be able to get that perspective of, you know, what, what is happening in the schools of journalism? What are uh, aspiring journalists being taught? And I knew she'd be able to bring that in. Um, then we had Ian Ketiku, who, um, again, spoken word artist, he also performed tonight. Um, but he also studied at Carleton, um, Carleton University School of Journalism. He's done freelance journalism um, out west in Calgary. And uh, so he has that perspective of being both an artist and um, a journalist. Um, he also, um, like myself, has a, an African background and, and definitely was able to reflect both um, issues facing um, black community members in terms of media representation, but also Africans particularly because Africa and um, how Africa is represented in the media has often been you know, something that many of us who are African are concerned about. Um, so I knew he'd be able to bring those perspectives, but also he's just, you know, he's young, he's you know, boisterous, he's very funny. Um, so I, I really wanted the panel to be kind of funny, um, and I, I kind of, uh, I knew I, ch I chose, I definitely, Ian and Manjeet, I knew they could be funny, and I knew it could be funny with them. I wasn't sure about the other two panelists, but in the end, we all were able to be funny together. It was great. Um, but because I, I also know that, you know, humor is a way of breaking the ice. So for uh, the audience, I really wanted them to get involved. And I think, you know, when people laugh, that's such a way of engaging the audience. Um, and then our final panelist was, was, was Vanessa Lee, who um, works for mainstream media. She is a reporter with CTV um, Ottawa. And I was really interested in having her because she does work for the mainstream. And uh, we, you know, we were talking a lot about mainstream, and in some ways we weren't saying very positive things about it. But she, you know, she works with it, and so I knew her perspective would be great because, you know, she knows what it's like to be in there. Um, she also, her background is, is, you know, she's Chinese Canadian. She's a young woman, um, and you know, she'd have though that that perspective to bring into it. You know, being a young woman, being Chinese Canadian, working in this mainstream. I knew her what she'd have to say would be just great, and I also knew having her on the panel would be great for. Um, the young people in the audience who are aspiring to be journalists in the mainstream media, they can see someone who's a young woman uh, of color who's doing it. And uh, I would think that would, that would be uh, great for them. And one of the things I definitely wanted everyone on the panel to do is give advice to um, young people from racialized communities, whether that be ethnocultural or Aboriginal communities, on, on you know, if they're interested in getting to media, that they can do it. And I knew she definitely, when they hear it from her, you know, it'd be like, oh yeah, she says she can do it. She also brought in the fact that you probably will not make a lot of money, which I think was a good uh, dose of realism um, for many of the young people in the audience, but uh, it put things in perspective. But all the panelists, um, I think, were wonderful and they interacted very well. And I think what really made me feel happy was that they all said they really loved being on the panel, which I think is just so important. You want your panelists to come out being like, I'm glad I did this, you know. So that was great. I want to ask you about the, the way you set up the panel. Like, I think there was three, four questions, and you see, so you'd ask the question, and they they each talk. About yes, it. and I so given I've given them the questions early on. Um, I had to cut out some of the questions just because of time. Um, but really, I, I was interested in, in them being able to share a bit about their personal history and their own journey into working in the field of media, whether it be producing media, whether it be. Um, you know, trying to engage media. Um, Manji Bassi talked about, you know, sort of being a social justice activist and trying to get things covered in the media, which I thought was a very interesting perspective. Or, um, like Dr. Dr. Um, you know, she is somebody who studies media and researches media. So um, that was sort of the first launching point for it. So we got an idea of who these people were and how they fit into this discussion. And then the next was really about, you know, how they felt that, you know, very ba basically the whole pur purpose of this panel was this issue of representation. So how they felt that their specific ethnocultural communities were represented. So some talked about their specific communities, some talked very broadly about ethnocultural communities in general. Um, and, you know, sort of talking about some of the challenges they see um, in, in basically making sure that um, the diversity of Canada is, is properly reflected in the media. 
Um, and then when it is reflected, that it's reflected accurately and, and not in a way that's um, overly sensationalist um, or that is actually contributing to stereotypes and, and prejudice and bigotry, which is, you know, totally against what we hope to achieve with multiculturalism. Um, so there was a lot of discussion around that, that was, you know, I knew that that would be the, the launch for um, all the discussion and the engagement of the audience. And uh, there was also um, discussion about solutions to this, you know, ways that we can solve this. And everyone, again, came up with uh, very different ideas, which was great. And um, yeah, and then I asked them to give uh, advice about, you know, again, to, to young, young people who are interested in there. I knew that there were several young people in the audience who were either going into journalism school or, you know, were already producing their own media. So I, I really, really wanted them to have the chance to, to hear from them. And then I asked them specifically what they thought um, about the project itself, the multicultural, the multimedia multiculturalism project, because I wanted to hear what they thought about it. You know, for many of them, it was the first time they ever heard about it as well, like the rest of Ottawa. So I thought it was very important um, to hear their perspectives and what they thought it could do. And uh, and uh, yeah, so it was it was very interesting. Now, Simi's already told us a bit about the what the project's about, but can you just do you have like a vision or just like concrete plans of what's going to be happening in the next? I think if it's three years. It's a it's a three year project, so we're into the first year, um, and there's been a f there should be two more cycles of interns. So I mean, my focus is Ottawa. I do have connections with um, the other regions, and you know, we're about it's really about building a network and exchanging with each other and learning from each other because the situation in Ottawa is so different than the situation in Vancouver, and it's different both in terms of the nature of media out there, but also it's different in terms of the the ethnocultural makeup. Certain cities have larger concentrations of certain ethnocultural communities than others. So um, one of the things that I, it's definitely my goal is to make sure that, you know, this project is reflective of the large communities we have of certain, uh, certain communities here. So for example, Ottawa has a large Somali community. So I want to make sure that in our project we engage that community, whether it be through the internships or through um, some of the project ideas we might do or some of the other events we might have, such as this with panel discussions, because I think there's a lot more to be discussed. Um, but my, my, my overall goal, I think, in working as the Ottawa Regional Coordinator is, is, is again, to build these bridges and build these networks. Because I think Ottawa has so much potential, and so much of that potential is in our youth, and I would say specifically in our Aboriginal and ethnocultural youth, because we, we are unique in so many ways. So many different communities are brought together here, and even in the, the Aboriginal community, um, you know, it's, it's, it's one of the few places um, in the country where you have both Métis and First Nations and Inuit together, and again, a large youth population there too. So I'm really interested in, in seeing how um, I can work with the project to um, harness the potential of, of a lot of our youth communities and also connect them with, with just the variety of possibilities there are in Ottawa in terms of engaging with multimedia. So not just the news, but also photography, um, pl plays, um, video production, social media even. Um, so really, um, I'm, I'm so happy to have this position because I, I have a lot of ideas. My, I mean, I work in the field of, of youth engagement. I work predominantly with ethnocultural communities and, and marginalized um, youth. So it's sort of just like, okay, well, there's just so much we can do and so much we can bring um, to the youth here. Um, and also, um, we have so many different media organizations in Ottawa that we can engage them with. Um, the other thing about being in Ottawa, also compared to the other cities involved in the, in, in, um, the project, is it's a very political town. It's the center of government. So a lot of the news here um, is covering politics. And I'm really excited, and we'll have to see how that goes, um, about seeing how we can connect some of the political issues with uh, with the media and with the youth because again those are things that often don't go together youth and politics you know there's all this concern about apathy but a lot of it has to be has to do with you know how are youth getting that information a lot of that information is coming through media but it's often coming through media that's not maybe youth friendly it's not really engaged in social media doesn't really know how to reach youth so one of my dreams is maybe to do something that is about getting youth to produce produce the forms of media about politics that'll actually be accessible and, and actually engage youth um, so I think there's a lot of potential here, and that's a great thing about this project is that it, you know, it, it's we can tailor it to each region so that it is reflective of the needs of that region, and then we can also learn from each other. Yeah. Um, something coming up with that you're you're talking about like the making connections and networks, and I was just thinking how there's a lot of that that can be formalized, but at the same time a lot of that is really informal, and it's just about like helping that come together in some way or other. Yeah, just bringing people together in a space like we did tonight. 
um, and giving them that chance to actually exchange their, their information and maybe you know become Facebook friends or follow each other on Twitter or something. And um, I think that is definitely something um, you know I'm really interested in continuing with panel discussions, looking at specific issues, and then just having the opportunity to have people just meet each other, um, having panels that highlight some very interesting people here in Ottawa who are doing interesting work. Um, so that's definitely something that I'm, I'm committed to continuing with and, and looking for part interesting partnerships um, with to, to bring that forward because I think it is just about bringing a whole bunch of different people together in a room and having them realize that they have something in common or that they have something to learn from each other and um, definitely I'll be continuing with that here in Ottawa. I'm going to be holding it down in Ottawa.